I do have some uh, some introductions here that I would like to uh, to share. I want to welcome each and every one of you to uh, to our Indigenous language uh, sharing series. I hope you can hear me. Can everybody hear me? Right on. Okay. So uh, good afternoon to everybody. I would like to begin the session uh, with our land acknowledgement. Uh, we honor the land on which we stand as the traditional territory of Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakoda Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, and Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe nations. Lands that are now known as part of Treaty 6, 7, and 8, and homeland of the Métis. Uh, we recognize and acknowledge Indigenous values, traditional teachings, ways of being, Con contributions and historical inequalities and respect the sovereignty, lands, histories, languages, uh, knowledge systems and cultures of Indigenous nations. Uh, the Supporting Indigenous Language Revitalization Project at the University of Man uh, sorry, <laughs> oops, <laughs> at the University of Alberta uh, began in 2021 as a community-led participatory five-year project enabled by BHP Foundation to provide support to Indigenous nations and communities to successfully carry out their own language revitalization efforts through the coming generations. Language is the fundamental way Indigenous peoples share their knowledge, communicate their understanding of the Indigenous worldview, and connect with their spirituality. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our Indigenous language sharing series. I hope I said that right, uh, Kevin, uh, which means to spread the word in the Plains Cree dialect. Uh, the purpose of these events are to bring us together to listen and learn from language warriors who are making an impact in their respective communities. Uh, and with that, I would like to ask uh, our elder, uh, Elmer Ghostkeeper, to open up our session with a prayer. Victoria. Yeah, miigwech for that uh, opening prayer, uh, Elmer. I have the privilege now of introducing our uh, guest speaker for today. Uh, and maybe just a, a reminder to everybody, we will be recording the session. So if you want to uh, shut off your video, you can do that as well. Uh, we would like to have the video available to, uh, to others and it'll be posted up on our website within the next uh, couple of weeks. Anyhow, I have, um, a bio here of Kevin. It's about five pages long. So please bear with me. He wrote it, by the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dr. Kevin Lewis Wasagayasio is from Ministic Lake Creek Nation in Saskatchewan. He is currently an assistant professor in the Department of Curriculum Studies at the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, Kevin completed his Ininiu Pimatsuin Kiskehtamawin doctorate program from the University of Blue Quills in Alberta. Kevin was instrumental in developing and is the lead instructor for the Indigenous Language Certificate Program in the College of Education. His research interests have been Indigenous knowledge systems, second language acquisition methodologies, Cree roles in traditional parenting practices. He's also an active Oskabeus whenever called upon. Dr. Kevin Lewis has worked with language teaching programs for the University of Alberta, the University College of the North, First Nations University of Canada, and the University of Saskatchewan. Kevin assists the Government of Canada in an official capacity as a Cree language interpreter and translator. His ongoing research project has been running for over 21 years and is based around Cree immersion programming and land-based education through a nonprofit called Kaniasi 
cultural camps. So uh, yeah, so excuse me for some of the uh, pronunciations. Uh, I speak Ojibwe or Anishinaabe when is my first language, and I know both languages are very similar. <clears throat> but uh, I hope I I uh, was able to uh, pronounce them properly. I'm sure uh, Kevin will will correct me eventually. So with that, I would like to. Uh, ask Kevin if he could maybe begin uh, the presentation. It's about uh, 125 right now here in Alberta. So you have anywhere from about 30 to 40 minutes for your presentation, Kevin. And then we'll also open it up for uh, any questions or comments that any of the participants may want to ask. And uh, we'll also have a closing prayer by uh, Elder Elmer uh, Ghostkeeper. Okay, take it away, Kevin. All right, thank you, Miigwech. Marcy, so uh, just thank you, um, I guess, for the uh, organizers for organizing something like this, because it's all um, it's on the front burner, you know, like to be really quite honest in terms of calls to action. Um, you have UNDRIP, um, we're in the decade of the indigenous languages and so on. So um, I love talking about this. And then you, OK, I'll be front and center and transparent here. I, my computer, I had this for tomorrow, so I'm, I was just about to, uh, yeah, geez, so um, thank you for your assistant, Jen, uh, emailing, and she's like, are you coming on or what? I'm like, yeah, I'm coming on, where am I going? <laughs> so like, so like, I thought it was a pre, kind of like one of those uh, before, you know, the event starts, but uh, but I'm ready, you know, I had this thing already, um, and of course, uh, in this time right now, I think the important thing right now really is like self care, uh, and that's sort of like what, what I, what we focused on during our hibernation as uh, Ino, as Nihil, as uh, Indigenous people. We went to hibernation for two years, just about you know, and um, so in this hibernation, uh, we started looking into uh, teachings and. I don't know if I have sharing capabilities or who has the power right now to give those uh, capabilities for me to share a PowerPoint, but I do have a little PowerPoint that I put together. And um, if somebody can hand that over, then I can go into the PowerPoint. But um, as my intro, uh, I am going to be talking about um, what, what we're doing at the grassroots here in the community what we have been doing, um, what started us off um, in 2003, but even further in 2001, actually I'm gonna, or 2000, the year 2000, late Frida Hennecke, uh was still alive. I still have a picture with her. Um, and that summer, uh, Heather Blair, Shirley Ferdeen, uh, late Donna Paskeman, and a whole bunch of women uh, were the ones that uh, were the front and center in this. So, and I don't, I'm not just going to say this, but it's true. Uh, and I've been in a lot of different um, institutions and uh, companies where uh, the women were leaders. Uh, Helen uh, Helen Ben was a, a tribal chief, and she put uh, you know the language front and center. Um, when I was in UCN, uh, Esther and her sister. Um, they were both, uh, um, you know, leaders in promoting language and culture. When I'm uh, at Blue Quills, uh, the social work program led by women, the Cree language program, Marilyn Shirt, Dr. Marilyn Shirt. So again, uh, a, a lot of these uh, Indigenous women are really, really focusing in on uh, something that's uh, dear and close to our hearts, which is our children. And then you have um non-indigenous academics just like dr gabor mate and uh, uh also dr bruce perry that are and then uh, uh dr mate's son nathaniel they just co-wrote a book and and i'm going through this so slow right now 
and um, taking this in, but uh, I always want to, I always want to um, uh, share kind of like books that I'm reading or listening to. And this particular one uh, is called The Myth of Normal. So it's their latest one. And because I'm going to be going on a long eight hour drive down to White Bear uh, First Nation today to go join their culture camp and hunting camp down there today after I'm done here, uh, I am, um, I'm going to be listening to the rest of this. Uh, and, and it's just bite sized pieces that I listen to. It's audio book uh, while I drive. So, and I also promote podcasts, whatever you guys are interested in. It's like the university is available to us all over the place. You have people that like, if you love beating, man, I'm sure there's something online and uh, an online uh, group where you can join and become like the best beater of all beaters. You know, if you're uh, medicines, talking about medicines, I'm sure there's podcasts. I'm sure there's online, whatever it is out there. So we're really we need to utilize um, the technology and that's something that uh, that we did during this COVID time, right? So uh, during that time, our reserve, and I'm from uh, Minnesota Lake Cree Nation, born and raised here. Uh, some call of it, uh, some call this place the center of the universe and you guys should come visit us. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> just kidding, uh, but it, uh, it's really a beautiful. Uh, we don't have cell service here. That's the only thing. So nothing's binging and nothing's ringing and nothing's like turn off your cell phone. Nothing like that, um, which is nice. Sometimes that disconnect is okay uh, for, you know, temporarily. So if you want to detox from that technology, uh, come to us and come visit us here. Uh, and we've been running um, since the dream started in 2000. 2003. Uh, we actually, uh, here's another book that I'm going to show, or handbooks. There's these handbooks called um, Awakening Our Languages, ILI handbook series. And there's actually 10 of them, but I only have nine of them. Um, but these little gems, everybody should have these, order them from the uh, Indigenous Language Institute down in the States. But I love these books. And this was the first one that I, it's kind of like a step by step by step by step. It's so nice. It even has surveys in there. All right. So when Sildi happened, the only place that, um, and this is what I saw in 2000, uh, 2003, I come home. And uh, when I was going to school here, when I was in the community, Kanto suskata masaga ka ningi ni hewan an pizza ay minak na mag sa ni hewan an so it was really the language health was very very good it was very healthy right it was just we're we're speaking Cree playing everything it was all in Cree so fast forward to the ITEP the Indian Teacher Education Program I go through there uh, coming on the other side of that experiment I thought what the heck did I learn that was indigenous I, like I still don't know my uh, who our older brother is. I still don't know ceremonies. How come I didn't learn a song or a prayer or, or anything about the pipes? Uh, I, I thought this was the mandate. You know, I thought this was, uh, I should have learned a lot more than just learning in a segregated style. Uh, but now it's way better. But um, at that time, it was basically just segre segregated and the ITEP programs all over. Um, we were learning the Saskatchewan curriculum. We're learning how to teach this curriculum to our our kids, right? And really, that curriculum is, is still very Eurocentric, still very white privilege, you know. Um, and I openly say that, and I hate teaching about uh, reconciliation because we're doing it on a grassroots level, and then you want to tell the truth. It really sucks for. Uh, it's very uncomfortable, you know, for, uh, because truth, Canada. Uh, they, it was illegal to bring out our pipes. It was illegal to sing our songs. It was a no-no to speak our languages. The churches just apologized. The government just apologized. And the police were involved, right? So, again, um, who in their right mind, with all these authoritative figures on this side, uh, saying, nope, don't do anything Indian. Don't do anything Cree. Don't do anything Anish. You know, don't do anything Dene. Uh, who in their right minds would go 
and keep on doing that right and i always give thanks to those people that um said and did their languages in at night in the quiet in the in far corners of the the reserves or just somewhere quietly because we still have those uh, those ceremonies here and we still have those songs and we still have our histories and uh i thank goodness for those and i was giving uh like i just I said a prayer just a little while ago I was literally at the dog yard there giving thanks and also giving thanks and keeping us safe right in in all of our home fires so again that's uh that's why I thank the the elder there for rendering the prayer for us uh this morning uh this afternoon I guess and also um to close in uh in a good way as well so um when 2003 came I came home and oh man it was like a 180 like kids were talking English and then but all the graduates all of us that went to the TEP programs that come home to teach uh all of us were speakers and, they, and then a lot of them are still in school here we could turn it around like that if everybody just basically said let's just start teaching Cree this is one of the schools that can do it um but it's the provincial grip it's the eurocentric grip uh it's the um it's that indian agent grip still that holds us back and i've got two huge books here that talk about this um these dreams that sildi uh come up with one of them is indigenous education and then this other one is first nation education policy in canada two wonderful books talking about all these different things that need to be done if we are going to have Indian control over Indian education, right? So I'm probably going to say a lot of different um, really uncomfortable things probably in this presentation, but I hope not, especially when you start seeing the kids and why we do it, uh, why we started a program. Um, so 2000, Sildi was the very first language program in our area. And I was lucky enough um, I remember I my family ditched me because Vancouver had like indigenous games and then they're like somebody has to look after the the, the home and everything else I'm like oh, okay I know who you guys are talking about so I said yes I'll, I'll stay and then but I'm going to take this one course that's being held at Onion Lake Cree Nation so uh, I would cut across these uh, the back road and I would make it there like in really good time uh, and then I would go to school, come back, do the chores that needed to be done, and then do it all over again. It was the best choice I've ever made in my life because I got to hang out with late Donna Paskerman, uh and Frida Hennecke, late Frida Hennecke, Dr. Frida Hennecke was such a, I loved her, you know, and I, and I still have so much respect for her, and I still use all of her books that she has published all the time. Um, and then also uh, Heather, Dr. Heather Blair, uh, and all those language activists that are still around. So it's a nice family. And then that's where uh, Violet and I, um, Dr. Violet Hogmao, right? Uh, so she, we crossed paths in at Sildi in Edmonton. She was one of my profs and the best prof I've ever had in my whole life, by the way, right? So again, um, now when we were there, I call myself a Sildi baby and when it started in 2000, uh, it moved a couple of times and then it finally found a home at the University of Alberta. And man, it was awesome because, uh, you know, as teachers, we're, we don't have too many evenings off. We don't have hardly any weekends off, uh, let alone you throw in family, you throw in children in there, you throw in the life in there, right? And then, um, uh, so we would go teach whatever it is whatever grade we're teaching through the whole year and then in the summertime that's when you would be able to go to Sildi and you'd go hang with hang out with people that just love languages that love cultures and then we'd get together and sit down and uh the morning circles the first day of the morning circles were the best because you found out whoa there's dog rib here oh there's lucy lucy's here you know and so you get to meet all of these different people from all over the place. And I recommend everybody to go to those places because now I think they're at that time, I loved it, but I was still very poor. 
uh, poor little bachelor, uh, still trying to make it in the big city and um, made it. But scholarships are there. Right? There's, there are scholarships now that are uh, assisting people that are very good speakers or have passion of the language. Um, and I love my job, you know, because this is this is what I do. I just do, I hang out uh, outside and I teach about uh, our relatives outside. And then sometimes when I'm a little bit cold, I'll go inside and warm up. And, but then most of it is outside, right? Sometimes you get stinky hides and you got to do them, right? And my birthday was yesterday and um, nobody wanted to hang out with me. And there was one stinky hide that was in left. Nobody wanted to touch it. And then birthday boy, boy, nobody wanted to hang out with the birthday boy. But I was shaking everybody's hands. Who cares, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was, it was so nice because we just finished um, 10 days of hide tanning, right? This is the curriculum. Uh, this is, uh, and it goes with uh, the hunting. It goes with um, the hunting season because moose are calling right now. And then you go even further. Um, and you, this is the 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 mating moon, the rutting moon, right? So uh, we made moose calls. We showed them how to cut the birch, what type of birch, what, what is a birch tree? What can you do with a birch tree? How do you tie this thing together so it feeds you, though, so you can call these animals? And, and then, um, so it, it was so science-based. It was so chemistry, um, the biology, the, the inside of an animal, the inside, the bones. What can you do with the bones, the, the legs? You know, how can you use them? How do you use the brain? How do you cut the moose nose off? How do you get the tongue out, right? Why do you do that? Who the heck wants to eat moose nose? You know, like, what's the story behind that, right? So, again, you add that narrative as you're doing it on site. And this is what we just finished going through. And then uh, this is my my trip down to um, White Bear. This is what we're going to continue on doing. So, in 2003, I was shocked. I was so mad. I was pointing fingers. So... If I, if I had a tantrum, that would have been that year that I would have had a tantrum, but then you couldn't point fingers. So, you know, Gugum, she's very, very the, the wise one, right? The wise. So I'm, I, I have this idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this. I'm going to include something here. And I'm going to go set a net. So I went uh, that, that night. It was Sunday night. And this was the, my Monday morning. Uh, lesson okay and uh, so I go set it set it the way I was taught oh next morning early in the morning no wind went out there and checked the net pulled the net oh my goodness did I have like nice white fish there's all sorts of different fish in there and I was like oh my goodness as I'm pulling this net I'm thinking these kids are ever gonna remember me forever they're gonna sing about me they're gonna re what the heck what why is it about me all of a sudden eh so I'm thinking this is the best lesson ever. You know, this is going to be amazing. We're going to feed the elders. We're going to cut these fish. Look at this. There's a white fish. There's a jackfish. There's a sucker fish. There's a, you know, so all of these fish. And then I take the tub into the classroom. I'm there early, nine, eight o'clock. I have this uh, fish on my desk, covered up. And then all of a sudden, buses start showing up, right? They're starting to show up. and then. Uh, Kids are starting to look at this box on my desk, and then um uh, and then they say, uh, Kevin, what's what's in that box? What's what? What are we doing today? And then I'm, and I'm like, come here, come here. You know, I take attendance and do you know the morning routine, and I'm like, guess what we're doing today? You know, I uncover it, and there's fish there. And then I thought, man, this is going to be amazing. We're going to smoke some of these. We're going to, uh, uh, you know, we're going to. Uh, fill it a lot of these fish different ways and we're going to see the anatomy of these fish and we're going to there's health involved there's history involved there's land you know so again it was just i thought it was just going to be amazing so i start handing out um uh the fish and cardboard and some knives and and then all of a sudden uh i get the first oh gross oh sick yuck 
Ooh, holy man, I was so mad. No, none of them wanted to touch the fish. It, 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 that was the worst, worst lesson I've ever had. You know, I still remember it. It just blew up in my face. And I thought, boy, these little kids, if I had a little stick, boy, I'd be just, these are my little relatives, by the way, right? So if I, my little nieces, nephews, boy, if you guys, and I bet you if you had a filet fish meal, uh, you know, right there, I bet you'd grab it. And I was so mad, you know, I was so, never mind, you know, I'm, so I go back into the regular course, I put the fish aside. So after school, I'm cutting them during lunch. I'm cutting these fish to make sure that at least somebody enjoys them, right? They're fresh, fresh. So after school, I go to my hukumo. Hukum, what's the gato gosh? Get down to me, sad. What's wrong with these kids nowadays? Oh, I I'd never ever thought I'd say that, right? These kids nowadays. So I'm pointing and then I. It's been, there's one kid there, and I'm pointing like this, and she says, "Oh, just got no Um, you're pointing one finger, but there's three pointing right back at you, and I just shut up. Eh? She just shut me right up. So, I thought, I thought, okay, I gotta. Okay, she's basically saying yeah, we gotta figure this out. I gotta problem solve this. So that was how much the disconnection happened uh, since when I was in uh, elementary school in that same school to. Uh, me going back there as a teacher, me going back there as an administrator, me going back there as a, as a counselor, you know, these different hats um, uh, as possibly a role model in a lot. Then there's still, if you're a, an Indigenous man, please go into education, right? Um, and go into uh, this type of programming because the women are leading. They're holding holding this up right now. We need to balance this. We need the men to to step up, right? To, and I want to say man up. I'm very careful with that that type of language, but to to step up and take uh, take the balancing role on this because uh, it's it's a very easy job. It's uh, it, it's so easy that the 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 kids because our males are not as healthy as they are in the communities. That they gravitate to you they actually respect you it's very easy job as a male teacher in our schools because there's not that many of us and when they see uh male teachers the, the kids just love you even the big ones that you think that oh and they're tall today holy smokes they're big but uh they it's a really good profession so if you have nephews or sons or uncles or you yourself want to be a teacher i uh, um uh, encourage the males uh, to step in and then the women they know how awesome it is right because my best teacher um, besides uh, Dr. Ogamau was uh, another one in uh, high school was um, uh, in grade 10 right Mrs. Cameron we called her and that was in uh, St. Michael's Duck Lake Residential School and that was the very first Cree teacher I've ever had. I'm like, wow, this is amazing that we have somebody like this. And she had that same humor and we couldn't get cheeky with her because she just she get cheeky back because she has the same humor. So it was like, it was so good. Learned so much from her. And I'm going to say all these um, teachers probably pushed me towards uh, what I'm doing today. And I love what I do. Uh, so I'm going to share and get right into this, and um, so I can I'll 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 start with the uh, the current slide here. So here is the um, this is what we're doing here. We're sharing teachings from the land. We're promoting wagutu kinship kinship of the lands, and uh, these. Uh, we we are a registered nonprofit, and we registered as a nonprofit in 2015, and we're still um, self-funded. So when you when we do have camps, and I I tell this to every camp, when you pay a registration fee as a participant, that money is actually paying for our school, our immersion school. So whoever comes to our camps is responsible for uh, to continue our, our uh, immersion school. And we launched that amazing dream in 2018, right? And that was just a year before, it was like a 2018, 19, the year of the indigenous languages, right? So that's when we launched it. And um, in 2003, 
uh, we did a canvas. We canvassed the community uh, with the big school. And I'm going to say 99.9% .9 said language and culture. And they were actually giving uh, constructive feedback. They were, they were giving us uh, constructive um, activities, right? And they even uh, numbered them in, in terms of importance. And we tallied those up. And actually, where we got the survey from was from one of these books, the handbooks, right? And so we just changed the name, uh, adapted uh, some of the questionnaire, and we we launched it during, um, we timed it around, uh, I think it was report card time. I remember that. And then we thought, I wonder if anybody's going to even you know, fill these out. I'm not sure if anybody's going to fill it. We got a really good overwhelming response. We got a really good response, healthy response from elders, male and female parents, and then guardians, you know, it was very, very nice to have that. And then we also canvassed the youth. So it was really good to have that. Overwhelmingly, they said, yes, language and culture, it's important to us. So let's just do something. So we created uh, Island Lake Cree Retention Committee, Cree Language Retention Committee, and we started our programming. And we we tried this uh, for th um, kid, uh, let's see, Head Start, no, no, daycare or nursery, nursery, kindergarten, and grade one. So three years, we changed um, the earlier's focus to teach our kids uh, Cree. And um, it was more kind of like a, I'm going to say bilingual program, but we wanted immersion program. Uh, the nursery and kindergarten were not really on board, but they were Cree speakers, excellent speakers. But I, I know I had to convince them. They were like, I don't know, you know. So again, it's kind of like a, we're, uh, there's a little bit of brainwashing that happens to our education system. And it still kind of happens. There's a lot of myths that we got to, kick them out you know and i think this is what we're doing in our in our program uh and then kindergarten was really good we had a very uh, a powerhouse of a, a teacher there and then we our grade one teacher was also a powerhouse teacher and that was the transition year so that grade one and then when the grade ones finished in going into grade two uh every five years and there's always language catalysts. There's always uh, English English language catalysts, math catalysts, and so on, right? So they would come to the school and they would assess our, our, our students. The After the third year, the grade twos got assessed. And believe it or not, um, the, the actual uh, examiner that came, she was blaming us that we were teaching or we stole uh, a test because our students weren't supposed to score that high, you know? And I was like, nope, we're just teaching Cree and uh, bilingual programming. And that's what the research says. That's what'll happen, you know? So they couldn't, they were really skeptical. They were like, who stole this test, you know? And I'm like, we just taught Cree, you know? And then because when you're learning two languages, your brain is you know, going, it's like a workout. You're, you're, it's a mental workout. Language learning is a mental workout. So imagine learning two languages at the same time. And uh, we're never ever uh, competing with English because it's always there, but it was the Cree that, uh, you know, if you develop early, those key, key years are the early years. And we're starting to know that because all of a sudden this Dr. Gabor Mate is saying, Yes, those early years are the ones that are very foundational for the rest of your life. Even if you have trauma as a as a child, they actually surface them, you know, surface and the people could get triggered. There's cancers involved, diabetes, obesity, and blah, 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 blah. And I guess what the elders said all along, they said, let's let's take care of our children, sing to their, their children, put them in moss bags. See, uh, you know, carry them all over, hug them, kiss them, you know, do those ceremonies that, you know, they did that. They've been saying that all along. Nothing's changed from what they said. But now you have Gabor Mate, you have these people that are starting to study drums, the beauty of drums, the beauty of rattles, the beauty of song, the beauty of our smudges. And they're saying, oh, yeah, I guess elders have been correct all along, right? So I kind of just 
well, what are we doing? We have to do something different and we, we have to privilege our elders. We have to privilege our languages, right? So 20, uh, this is uh, September. So we opened this class, we opened this school and we held, uh, we had a little bit of money left. We had a little bit of money left and that, that we could pay um, two teachers and uh, possibly a TA, but also, um, uh, what was it, a, a hot lunch program and a breakfast program. So there's just enough money in our non-for-profit bank account that we could pay for this. And we thought, okay, if there's five kids, we're still launching this. If there's two kids, we're still launching this. So he said, this is the day that we're going to launch it. 17 kids showed up. 17 kids from three communities. Four, actually, if we count uh, Moody Lake here. Four communities. Um, Joseph Bigot, there was one child from there. Loon Lake, children. Magosagegan. They they brought their kids. And then, of course, the Ministiquin and Moody Lake, there was kids here. So there was, you know, they showed up and um, it was launched. And what a relief that day was. And what pride. Because some of these kids now have, have gone and aged out. Uh, of the program and they're shining in those schools like they're shining in uh, the, the 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 bigger schools we'll call them right and there's no secret to this like if you have more less people the ratio and we're still in a schoolhouse by the way um we don't have any provincial or uh federal funding from the education uh, we're working, we're always constantly fundraising, proposal-based. Um, the camps are a real big fundraiser for us when we do hike camps, uh, when we do canoeing camping, uh, when we're hiking, uh, those type of land-based immersion programming training, uh, when we do that. Uh, uh, even talks like this, uh, if, I, if I do a keynote or whatever it is, I... That's what's funding. You, you guys are are uh, funding this type of programming, which is just love. I, I love sharing about this, and it's still functioning. They're going to school right now, and then half of the time they're here as well. They were part of our land based. Uh, I mean, our, our uh, high tanning camp last week, and um, in the summertime as well. We go to school in the summertime, right? In New Zealand, they break their school into quarters. We do too. Um, so, and then we like to share. Uh, our initiatives we like to share practices uh, the development of our curriculum is based on uh, 2014 we uh, we had a talking circle we had a four-day gathering with our elders local elders and I have DVDs and I don't even know if I have a DVD player but anyways I have it and it's recorded I have uh, DVDs with our elders talking about this type of program what should we be teaching the kids? How should we be teaching them? Who should we be privileging? You know, how, uh, what season should we teach in? And they were like, all year round, all summer, all winter, springtime, fall time, you know, around hunting, around you know, our dogs, our dog sledding. We do dog sledding, snowshoeing, ice fishing, trapping, making mitts, right? Beating, quill work. Uh, how do you dye those things, right? How do you, so there's all of these additional things that have, that have come up because of what we've done here since uh, 2018. And then most important is probably the partnership and the, develop, uh, the, the relationships that you develop with schools. Because yes, the school is here, the immersion school is here, but it's the other schools that have come to spend four days with us five days and not only schools of all ages but universities colleges and special interest interest groups so we have four cabins right now that are winterized and um, that's how we can uh, bring in people and we we show them how to teach uh, you know outside being outside so here get this so when we talked uh, with the, uh, when you talk about um, curriculum, okay, what had happened was um, we started listening to the songs. We started going into ceremony. We started listening to uh, the elders, both the old ladies and the old men. And um, uh, what had happened was uh, history is in there, our history, 
you know, the, the architecture of those lodges, all those poles, you know, those poles that are like in the horse dance, in the ghost dance, in the sun dance, in the sweat lodge, uh, all of them uh, in the round dance, you know, all those words, all those pipe teachings, they're in there. And we, we have lots of guests that come and they'll share their information. Uh, we'll give them the protocol. They'll come spend time with us. Uh, and, it, and we still have lots of elders. That's another thing too. Wherever you guys are, um, seek them out. You know, make connections, communicate with them. Find out uh, what they feel that they can share. Uh, we've had a number of gatherings. Um, we're going to be having a fourth gathering coming up next July. And it's probably going to be knowledge keepers, land users uh, around water. And uh, the water gatherings are pretty, pretty awesome when, because you have different guest speakers. Some are science-based, some are traditional-based, some are hunters, some are medicine people, some are very gifted in whatever it is that they're going to be sharing, right? So lots of demos happen, but lots of learning, sharing, right? So it, it, it's very beautiful to have that. and then. Um, uh so this is the Cree that we're using. So now there are books that you can buy that, that'll teach inside and they can teach inside a school. They can there's a nice little fence that don't go outside the fence, don't go to the lake, don't go to the bush, you know. That's where bears are, that's where the moose are, that's where wolves are. Don't go over there. And then for us, that's like you're literally uh restructuring the reserve system you're restructuring these borders the, you know the border system and when you look at the treaties when you look at our our ceremonies you take you take people outside and then there you get the feel on your face so when it's warm you get to feel the sun the grandfather's sun if it's raining a little bit and it's it's you seek beast you seek beast aga, or sick when it's raining the thunder beings those are the ones that are our grandfathers our grandmothers so you're exposed to family those are family members those are grandparents and grandfathers and grandmothers and then the wind as well that's a animate spirit that's the one that can clean things it can um, give us breath. It, it, we actually need that grandfather to talk, to pray, to sing, to communicate. We need to, you know, breathe breathe that grandfather in, and, right? That the to learn how to breathe, um, and then of course the four leggeds, uh, the 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 grandfather and grandmother bears, you know, uh, those uh, those and then uh, the grandfather buffalo. You know, mustus. Uh, you know, xinapiu mustus is part of the Sundance ceremony. And one of our one of our students that just graduated from our immersion school finished her first Sundance this summer. And what a powerful thing that is to be part of that. And I was so I was in tears. You know, and she was like, ah, that was the most hardest thing I've ever done, but she did it. You know, she did it for us. She did it for herself. She did it for so many things. You know, it was just powerful to to have that um, to have that done. So that's nihiaun. So nihiaun it can't be taught in in this just the school in four walls. You have to go outside because you're forgetting all those relatives that are not just the two leggeds. Because when you just teach about the two leggeds, you're just thinking of yourself. You're like, oh yeah, this is me. This is my world. When you're in ceremony, or it's way at the end that the and it's a grandmother spirit, no and that's the one that they thank way at the end for the two leggeds. First, it's all those, all those uh, creation, the architect, the best architect, what the, that architect created for us to experience and uh, to also meet these different relatives. Sometimes they have four legs, sometimes they're plants, sometimes they're trees, sometimes they're flyers, you know? There's even half beings, half thunderbird beings, horses, all, you know? So it's so amazing when you start talking about it, 
I, I shared some of these uh, stories with a group of men one time, and then one of them's like, "Oh man, you're talking about little people. That's just this is just like Lord of the Rings." I said, "Oh man, it is. You know, that's our stories. They are lo like Lord of the Rings, but this is our. These are our stories, right? So they're so." beautiful when you start talking about them so again this is the, uh, what i mean about wagutu and, and them braiding the sweet grass them knowing where to take that sweet grass where to get that mint or where to get those medicines if they're not feeling well if somebody gets stung those kids they know exactly which medicine to chew on to put on that sting right isn't that awesome so they know where food comes from they're not grossed out anymore. Uh, it's just like they were in 2003. Oh man, that this my explode my uh, my best lesson I've ever thought. But it actually it is maybe a best lesson for me because we did change it. Now these kids are uh, they understand the importance of moose meat. They were they had lasagna with moose, you know, burger. Um, we started introducing buffalo. But we, you have to buy buffalo, right? Uh, moose calling contests, you know, they, we just have so much fun. It is lots of fun. And um, they, they just, uh, berry picking. Berries, finally, this year, there was lots of them, right? And um, we, we stocked up on them because we use them all year round. And then again, look at the little girls there. They were just like, oh, man, what the heck? So the, uh, you're scraping um, you're scaling, you know, you're scaling and then you're taking all the innards, you get the pipe inside this whitefish and then how you cook it. Um, a real side note here, okay, again, a little, uh, you know, there's a, I always bring her up, but it's an old lady either from Brochet or Lac Brochet. So you know how the old people, they love sucker heads. Oh, sucker head soup. Oh, I love that. So you boil them up. Save those for me. No, some, you know, I want to eat those. I haven't eaten those forever. So anyway, we are doing this. And uh, we were in uh, um, Easterville, I think, at the time. And we caught a whole bunch of suckers. So we made sucker head soup. And then uh, one of the ladies, she said, there's this one lady up in Brochure, Lac Brochure. And they eat, as she eats, because the sucker head is full of bones. It's a very bony fish, right? And then as she ate, people would sit right, right beside her. And as she ate, she would pull out these bones. And she would tell a story based on these bones. Like one looks like a knife. One looks like an axe. Uh, there's even, um, you know how moose antlers look like this? There's even a bone right here at the bottom that looks like moose antlers. So, yachimut. As she's eating, how entertaining is that? I would just want to see who that is, and hopefully she's still alive, and hopefully somebody's carrying on that uh, the store, the power of story, right, around food. You know, oh, I just I wish I met somebody that that did that, but if not, I I started pulling out those bones, so I'm gonna make up something. Uh, another thing too is um, climate change. We're aware of it. We are. But when we asked the, the elders and told them, like, how should we teach? What should we do? How, you know, is the end, is, is this the end of humankind? What's going on? Is the sky falling? And then all they said was, go back to those old ways. Learn how to cook around a fire. Learn how to smudge. Learn those medicines. Learn how to cook those fish. Learn how to call in that moose. Learn how to, you know. So all of these, this curriculum, we're not really too worried about it because there's a flood story that we teach. Uh, and that's our older brother, right? I'm not going to say his name right now because I don't want it to snow yet. Not yet, not yet. Uh, and then, uh, of course, the, um, and you know who I'm talking about. Uh, and then there's also, uh, I know of two Ice Age stories. So we've gone through climate change and how we went through those particular you know, world events was we went to the basic skills of survival. We went to our songs. We went to our lodges. We went to our no, ways of knowing, our ways of doing, you know, our ways of living. And we and those uh, relatives that are the sun, the thunder beings, the wind, the, the you know, all those ones that we pray to all the time in every lodge, they took care of us anyways. 
you know, just be respectful. Um, locally too, we, we've uh, tried to lessen our, and we're trying to um, collect water. Uh, we're big gardeners, avid gardeners. So we're trying to figure out ways to garden indoors, uh, apartment style gardening, um, possibly looking into greenhouses, um, even wintertime, how to garden, keep greens. And uh, the community purchased two grocers. So we're gonna we're working on that type of curriculum as well, where they're they're planting literally in sea cans. So you can get uh, greens all year round, your you know, fresh greens, not the ones that are well, who knows where the heck they come from. And then we also um, have started buying solar panels uh, to lessen our carbon footprint. So we're really trying to utilize, you know, and try to be innovative, but expose these kids. Uh, we can get power from the sun, you know, and they actually work really well in the wintertime. Um, let's see here. Uh, this, this is the, the school logo is on the right side. And this is our culture camp. So if, if you wanted to um, take a picture of those or Google us, uh, we do have a website. And Kanyasik um, Miwapa is this, the immersion school, and it's K-7. Uh, and then uh, the culture camps are for everybody. And we certify using um, Red Cross uh, for wilderness first aid, remote first aid, wilderness first aid, advanced wilderness first aid. Uh, OCC, Outdoor Council of Canada, we partnered up with them for hiking cert certification. And then um, Paddle Canada, we can, uh, we love paddling. We make birch bark canoes, right? So we, we can paddle canoes that we've made. And then there was another one we just sent off to Edmonton. We gifted uh, that one to Knowledge Centre, Indigenous Knowledge Centre in Edmonton. Uh, and then here's where the research continues. We need Indigenous research. Uh, we still use tobacco. Or we still use Indigenous researchers. Um, to, and we need that because Indigenous people doing Indigenous research to benefit Indigenous peoples is such a good formula, you know. And in that way, we're empowering and capacity building our, our, ourselves. So... There's a lot of grants like shirk grants and shirk um, and like health grants that are out there, but we start we need to start developing our own grant writers and start developing our own programming uh, and not only education but health, uh, social services, family, child, you know, um, indigenous women and girls, LGBTQ2S. So to make safe places. It's very important to create safe places and not to be judgmental, not to attack, not no lateral violence. No, that's a man's job. That's a woman's job. That's a, none of that kind of talk. We, we need to make sure there's places there that we can light our sweet grass. We can lift our pipes. We can sing our songs without looking around. And, and it's like, is it safe to do this? Like, is this 20, you know, what year is this? Can we still do that? And, there are still places that'll say, nope, get that stuff out of here. No way, you know, get that nonsense out of here. And um, it shouldn't be like that, you know. Uh, internationally, we're looked at as as leaders in Indigenous, um, in, in this truth and reconciliation, in the healing side of things. We are looked at as, as leaders. So we want to uh, invite Indigenous leaders from not only uh, Turtle Island, but overseas, the indigenous people from Australia, the indigenous people of South America, indigenous people from Europe, indigenous people from Africa, indigenous people from New Zealand, right? So all over the world, we want to invite those people to come and they have showed up. So again, um, uh, we need those uh, types of systems and we need to write about this. And uh, professional development, we do that, right? Just look us up. I'm just trying to rush through this so because I, I understand like I was uh, and I apologize. I hate being late. I'm the worst guy. I'm so bad uh, and I'm uh, I'm usually not. Uh, 
because I, I'm a big preacher of saying Indian time. Indian time is like before the event shows up and then there must have been something here that called me here, which is uh, maybe uh, uh, somebody's Gugum or Mushroom spirit <laughs> told me to get back to the house because I could spend lots of lots of time out there. I could spend hours with the dogs, but don't uh, you ever tell anybody that. Kevin, can I just interrupt for a second? Yes, yeah. Yeah, um, it's about 2.15, but uh, if we give you an additional 15 minutes, are you fine with that? Maybe your presentation could go till 2.30, and then we want to open it up for uh, for questions after that. Okay, I think I'm I'm close to the, the, the end anyways, but like I okay. can, of course I can, yeah. Sure. Okay, let's do that. Okay, me watch. All right, so... Um, so the professional development here, um, we've become, since we've been doing this uh, for 21 years, this fall, it'll be 21 years, um, we've become leaders, like uh, risk management. Um, we don't, we do lots of ceremony, but we don't, uh, it's just something that we do. And it's our form of risk management. Risk management on the white side, uh, you know, they'll say, oh, okay, um, you know, they'll count uh, count the time, the minutes, and and they'll count the food, they'll count, you know, there's all the, the weather systems. Uh, but when we do ceremony, it's our form of uh, making sure that our relatives are understanding what we're going to be doing uh, in this specific time frame, And then when we do that, why you should see everything sort of line up you know um it, it's so nice and it was something that was told to us by late simon kaituhat so in musum bano he's from um just the next reserve over and uh, my very very first culture camp 2005 why well, it was raining windy oh it was nasty and then he goes uh, no sim do you have a pipe? I'm like, no, Muslim, I don't have a pipe. Where am I going to get a pipe from? And then the, the other uh, elder that I had there, he said, I brought I brought my pipe. And he says, okay, Ma, let's, let's have a ceremony. And then, uh, so we did. We smoked that pipe. And then he, uh, at, during that pipe, he said, no, Sim, if you're going to do these type of things, these type of gatherings, you know, smoke. And and make sure you do do things right, and then everything will fall into place. And ever since that time, that, that's what we've done. But we will never see it on. We never never put it on anything. We just do it, um, even if it's just quietly and first thing in the morning. You don't need that many people. We just pray, make sure that our relatives are understanding. You know, if it's going to be trapping, if it's going to be medicines, if it's going to be a um, hiking or canoeing or whatever it is, dog sledding, make sure that uh, everything knows around. And that's our form of uh, uh, making sure everyone's safe, you know, that nothing goes wrong, but uh, that, that uh, connection happens. So again, um, risk management, we have different ways of doing things, but we indigenize those. If we're paddling, uh, we do leave no trace practices, but that's our way anyways, right? Uh, but if there's medicines, well, we'll go there and we're going to go pick so that specific medicine that's specific for that time to be picked. If there's berries that are over there, we're hiking there and we're going to go pick those berries because we need them in the winter months or if there's something that comes up, we need those. If that moose, is, if we need to harvest that moose, we're going to send out our hunters. So again, um, it's a... Uh, we indigenize all those certificates and we cover the content that they have. But when you indigenize it, boy, you just like, it's like you double the content. You make it so awesome. Um, and then here's the Mari and you have the Navajo on the left. So this is at our school gym. They brought themselves here and they, the Mari, I, I love the, these students they fundraised, uh, so financial literacy is something that um, that's very dear to our hearts, but also uh, that's what they teach over there. So they they actually bought two vehicles, believe it or not, and then they uh, somehow sold them. They transported them. They they organized all this, and they got them to New Zealand for very very, you know, shipped there cheap, and then all of a sudden they sold them, and then they made money to to fund their whole trip coming to Turtle Island 
and then ending up down in Vegas and doing some other trips down there and then going home. It was, and I think they went to LA, uh, met some local Maori that were um, living over there. And then, then they flew home, but it was such a beautiful visit. We did a, they showed us how to cook in a hongi underground with rocks and we had a ceremony. They saw a horse dance. They have, you know, so it was just beautiful. Same time, we had the Navajo that come up because we went down there. And we also went to New Zealand. Um, and they came up here and they showed us their language, their dances, their their ways of knowing, their ways of planting. They're very good gardeners down there. So they even come up here and they're like, what the heck are you guys doing with your corn? And they were like, I don't know. We're just We want corn. I love corn. And then they're like, oh, no, no, this is too close. You can't have these blue corn with these white corn. They're going to be, you know, and that's exactly what's happening. So they showed us how to plant, how to, uh, you know, companion gardening, you know. So these two independent school systems have added to our own programming. So and, and that continues, right? We're still still going. Um, let's see here. This year is our um uh like i said i mentioned 2000 sildi and then we continued on to uh develop the relationship and as a researcher at blue quills as well and i had a real good discussion with um the president and uh, uh my dear friend and colleague and uh, uh the president right now and dr sherry chisholm and dr marilyn shirt and then they were saying, uh, what's going on with uh, Kanye? I said, how come you're, you know, what's what's happening over there? I'm like, oh, man, there's amazing things happening over there, you know. And that's where I am all the time. And it's kind of like a, a lab, uh, a classroom. And it's all these different things. And, and then it was taking a lot of time away from actually being on campus. So and then uh, I said, well, it's you guys to blame, you know, why it's successful because it's a model like Blue Quills. It's like Mamogamatu, uh, right? And it's Wagutu and all those, all our teachings, uh, the seven seven sacred teachings that we have. That's what we're using. That's why it's it's so uh, amazing because Blue Quills, if you go ever go there, um, it's an old residential school turned into high school, a college, and then now a university. Now they have their own doctoral program. Uh, and I'm very happy to say I'm a, I'm a graduate for, alumni from there. Um, but it, it's it's a model that works. Uh, also, creating partnerships with um, not only the First Nation University, but University of Saskatchewan, um, the Wheat Institute um, out of Winnipeg, so and then University of uh, Victoria. Uh, so there's a lot of partnerships that are happening because people are very interested in knowing who we are. Right, um, we're starting to develop uh, a tourism destination, Saskatchewan, in Saskatchewan, um, and this is a model that we've seen in New Zealand. Um, they have their marais; they keep things sacred. Uh, they keep things, you know, but they're also there's some places where you can uh, develop relationships. You can cr create, um, uh, you know, partnerships. Um, and it and it went over into the tourism side where people wanted to experience what it's like to be a part of a hongi, uh, to to show their dance. And we have powwows, we have indigenous cuisine, uh, we have um, stories, we have diff so many activities. I can't even list them all, but like there's so many activities that we have that Canada doesn't even really realize how rich we are, right? Um, so again, not only Canada, but in Saskatchewan, Alberta, and Manitoba, all these um, industries are just waiting for us. And that's business. People that can make careers, entrepreneurs, you know. And but we need to we need to start them off in the schools to start understanding, not to just depend on the chief and council, not just to depend on the welfare systems not to depend on just you know pennies and really small little budgets but to think bigger and to start utilizing you know responsibly uh, our lands and resources and uh, again we need meetings we need creating spaces uh, we need to start talking like that and also to review um, right now 
we're still in negotiations. We're still trying to push through some sort of tuition agreement, um, some sort of way to give us authority over our education system, you know, so the provinces in Canada aren't, you know, so, hey, hey whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, what we're seeing is what French Canada is seeing in their programs. They have, say, JEP programs. That's something that a lot of people don't know about. But Ontario used to call it grade 13. But she's, say, JEP programs in Quebec are when people are done grade 12, and I was one of them, I didn't go straight into university. I waited. Like, I, I if I went, as a 18 year old or 17 year old into university, the university would have ate me up. I would have, would have failed. I would have probably got kicked out. But um, 18 or um, a few years where you can still develop your skills and then you have options. You can go into trades. You can go and trades, man. We need we need a lot of people in that uh, in all of those trades. Um, we need houses, you know, we need architects, we need uh, engineers, um, we need educators, uh, we need lawyers, we need, you know, all uh, agriculture is, is food is going to be such a big thing, right? Um, a recession's coming up here right away in Canada. So you're going to see food um, the possibly doubling they said so now what happens well we should go into gardening you know we should practice our you don't need that big of a yard to have a good sustainable garden and preserving techniques how do you can how do you preserve your meats how do you store them in the winter time you know so we have those we've done it you know we just have to um, develop those policies uh, uh, so we've developed education policy outdoor policy but what we're also saying is you know, we've we've been messed up through residential schools, day schools, day, uh, the 60s scoop. Don't rush us, you know, because the, what Canada and the province or provinces are going to do is say, okay, we're going to give you the funding and we're going to give you a timeline and hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, you've really messed up uh, our communities. We have suicide. We have diabetes. We have obesity. We have all these things, mental health, depression, you name it. Um, that's what we're dealing with because of those policies that have been oppressed. Uh, you know, we've been oppressed and we're starting to lift up. We're starting to lift ourselves up. So again, we say, don't rush us, you know, just relax because you, you've kind of messed up. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, so we need to call them on that. Um, also, the current design, we use a quarterly system. And that way, when I was uh, a teacher here um, full time, we were like, come on, we got to hit 175 at least teaching days. We have to at least minimum, you know, and we're always counting down summers off. But what I found when I went to Sildi was I went to school with flip flops, shirt and uh, shorts on in the summertime and I was going to school and what a total different environment that felt like it was like in my head I'm like you know you're sitting there and I loved all every single class I've loved in there uh, and I'm not just saying that but like I, I, I do I love them all um, but sitting there and thinking oh the smokes you know this must be how Hawaii feels like when they're going to school <laughs> you know they're in shorts and flip-flops you know and uh, and it's hot, you know, and it's it's such a different learning environment, and it's beautiful, right? So I don't know why the heck we don't have summer school because we have such beautiful um, summers, and even a couple of weeks in the summertime, and then just spread it out. Who wants a longer winter break? I do, you know. I, I'd love to go somewhere in the winter time. And just spread those uh, throughout the year a little evenly, you know. But ceremony happens in the summertime. That's when the elders are out and about. They're not scared of getting sick because they're out and about just having fun, enjoying. They're not scared of uh, getting cold, you know. So it's it's utilize them. And why I say that is because, like, I've heard countless times over and over again, Oh, our elders are our aunts are our, uh, our libraries are our, our archives. There are living dictionaries, and then what do we do as Indian people? 
we let our kids out, you know, we let them out in the summertime and then the elders are coming out and they totally miss each other. You know, they're not even connecting. So it's like, yeah, right. You know, it's kind of, kind of call, you know, kind of like, are you really, you know, do, are you really connecting with the elders? You know, uh, but it should be done in the summertime because that's when things are growing. That's when the ducks are here, you know, the eggs, uh, the medicines, the berries and everything else. That's when they're out and about. So we need to connect. So these, some of these things we do, all of them we do, not some of these, all, all these months, all these activities we do. Um, and mental health, these are things that we're continuously working on right now. Western therapy versus traditional therapy, inner child therapy, but indigenizing it. There's ceremonies that we do, land-based activities every day. There's something to do every single day healing through land and uh, releasing the, the good chemicals in our brains, right? The, the dopamine, uh, the endorphins that you get after like doing, like hauling wood, you know, splitting wood, um, hiking. Uh, so, uh, and then traditional parenting workshops, that's what we had in 2014. And we, we privileged the elders. And that's where we got our mandates and that's where we got our curriculum. So those are the ones that I, that are in my backpack all the time. And then now, realistically, this is something that was said to me uh, in the Indian residential school gatherings. Uh, they started asking us to start teaching about how to pray, how to smudge, how to, you know, do all those different things because they never got the opportunity as <clears throat> people that went to residential school or 60 school. Um, where we got the benefit of, of knowing how to use sweet grass, knowing how to use smudges, uh, sage, all those different beautiful smudges that we have. And then now these residential school survivors, our relatives, they're saying, can you teach us how to do that? Because we're starting to get the tobacco and we have to render the prayers. We have to say, so again, the elders, you need to pull together and start creating workshops of your own how to become a grandfather how to how to be a healthy grandmother uh, how to be um even a japan right a great grandparent um so again those are activities because that parenting you know it wasn't our choice we have to understand it was it was forced uh, it was policy so there's the uh the website um you can probably just take a picture of it and then um, this is uh, the Miguapa. These are our kids. These are, this is what we do. And uh, um, thank you uh, again, Violet, for creating a, a place for us to, to talk about uh, this type of programming and um, uh, to share space. And again, thank you for, uh, you know, being here, being present. I know I was a little bit behind there to start off with, but hopefully... Uh, the content that I shared, um, it come from here and it, it's, it's from the community and we need more places like this. We all over the place, right? We need the, these spaces where we can be just us. And it feels so good because those kids, when they, when they're not, um, rushed or, uh, pressured, you know, when they're just loved and cared for and we give them the, the attention that they need. Those are the ones that are going to be changing the game for us in the future.